drivers fighting for a title. Yes, 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 yes! Away, step up. Welcome back to Homestead. Great job, Let's go to him this time. Everyone brings their A game when it comes to winning championships. Each year, it's amazing to watch everybody's talent increase, the garage get more competitive, and how hard we all have to race one another. First question will be, who will bring their A game to qualify, which is about to get underway for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. For the final time in the 2016 season, who will win the pole and of the championship four? Where will they start for the final race? Yeah, that's very important since that's the way they want to finish. The person who finishes in front of the other three is the champion. Two drivers still fighting for their first championship. Two drivers fighting for multiple championships. And important in this qualifying session because pit selection also comes into play. So if you can make it into the final round, you're going to pretty much end up with a pretty good pit stall. Well, that's the point. We, at this point, we've only practiced. We've only seen these cars practice. But this is the first opportunity for these drivers to go out and truly affect their Sunday, affect their race day. And it starts with qualifying well because of pit road. If you can qualify inside the top 10, really there are 10 pit stalls that are guaranteed to have an opening either in or opening out. And while that doesn't seem like a lot, if you are fortunate enough to get one of those pit stalls, you then have a little bit of an opportunity to control your fate. So if you're right here in pit stall 14 or pit stall 13, you have a gap between you. So the chance of getting blocked in goes down up until now we've talked about who's good enough this is the point while there aren't points paid jeff this is the first time you can truly affect your race yeah you never know what's going to happen that's going to allow you to win the championship or prevent you from winning the championship and it can start tonight not only on pit road but in this race this is a very multi multi group racetrack we're going to see people on restarts going all over the racetrack so if you can start in the front versus the middle that's a big difference in how aggressive you have to be to get that track position so everything starts right now tonight pit road is affected on track is perfected is, is affected everything starts right now in this qualifying in the practice earlier today jimmy johnson looked to be the fastest of the championship four can he convert that from what we saw in practice into the qualifying today well we're getting ready to find out. The chips are down <laughs> right now. I, I, I wish I could tell you. Yeah. But the one thing I do know is we've seen over and over with this format, people find a way to step up. They find a way to be their best right now on this weekend. And that's what all four of these teams are in a quest to do. This is kind of like the weigh-in to a heavyweight fight. While the bout isn't going to be you know, decided in this situation, momentum can start. So if you can go out, you can strike, strike against your opponents. No one, they can all talk they want to be good. The truth is they all want to be on the pole. So if one of these championship four can qualify on the pole, that's really, in my opinion, the first landed blow of the bout. You don't want to be saying, oh, we got a good car to race. Oh, yeah. You want to be worst, saying, we got line. a good car that went fast. We're going to qualify well. It's time for the stare down then. If it's a championship battle, who will win this first fight as they're going for a title in 2016? Four drivers. All with the same goal, winning the title at season's end. When we start the season, our goal is to win the championship. Carl Edwards wins in Texas. If we could win this title, it would be great. It'd be an amazing feeling. One at 37 years old, Carl Edwards. The other, 26 years old, at Joey Logano, looking for their first championship. Kelly. But Joey Logano obviously still has a lot of experience under his belt, so many years in this sport. But Joey, before the break, the guys were talking about, hey, no points paid for qualifying. Obviously, you start up front, you get pit stall, stall selection. But how does what happens here tonight dictate the mood for the rest of the weekend? I think you always want to start up front, right? And, uh, and qualifying has been good for us in the past here, uh, um, not only here at Homestead, but recently. So we're hoping that the Shell Penzo 4 has got speed once again. Uh, like you said, having good pit stall selection is important for sure. Um, you know, there's no bonus points for leading laps or anything like that, but track position still means a lot, um, such as towards the end of this thing and being able to tune your car to the uh, cleaner air. You were the fastest among the championship four um, in practice. Is that enough, or do you need to be uh, fastest of all 40 cars here tonight? We came here to win, not just beat uh, three cars. We want to go out there and beat the whole field. And um, 
That's at least the attitude we have, and we need to maintain that attitude throughout the weekend. So uh, we were close in practice, and it was fun to watch practice, really, because there were some cars that were running the wall. Kyle Larson, big big surprise, I know. And then there was Ryan Newman that was right on the bottom. So it was fun to kind of see where everybody's at, and uh, we'll see where we end up. All right, thank you, Joey. Thanks. Rick? Thank you, Kelly. He looks so relaxed to me. Yeah. He looks like he's having a good time, like he's he fits in this moment. This moment's not too big for him. Uh, he just looks ready for, for this weekend. So much pressure on the shoulders of not only Joey Logano, the youngest of the Chase competitors, but all four of these championship hopefuls. It's all on the line this weekend. This is an all-access zone. Still there in the middle. Quarter. Still there. We're going to hear from their spotters, from the crew chief. Clear, clear, clear. All the communication that the drivers hear, you're going to have the opportunity to hear that throughout the day. Bring it home, champ. We did it, guys. Yeah! You guys are awesome! You can get closer to the championship four with Hot Pass. That's on NBC Sports app. You can get play-by-play -play coverage, dedicated feed, multiple camera angles all around Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, and Carl Edwards. That coverage on Sunday begins at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Find out more at NBCSports.com slash live. Marty. Rick, where these cars park on pit road is a random draw every week here in NASCAR, but this is always how NASCAR works out. In the random draw, you can see Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch have picked beside each other, and then on the other side of pit road, Joey Logano and Carl Edwards have picked beside each other. So the random draw, very crazy because these teams right beside each other. So if you want to know what your fellow championship contender is doing, just look next door. You'll know what's going on. How much do you think that'll play into this qualifying session you know of course a little bit of strategy comes into play some people maybe Jimmy Johnson who in practice earlier today went out ran a pretty good lap then waited about 25 minutes before he went back out onto the track listen I think the strategy comes in this first round so in practice about a 30 80 was quick about a 31 25 was 24th so it's almost a half a second so Jeff if you're Jimmy Johnson who was fifth quick, do you dare not run 100%? Do you dare wait, let some cars go on the track and run 90%, try to save a little tire? Because every time you go on the track, you have less grip. Or is it all out to guarantee you've moved through? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As we take I'm going that way. I'm going all out. I don't think you can ride. I don't think you can risk not moving into round two so i think you have to go run as fast as you can and this is what i'm talking about rick that group qualifying format round one we have 24 will advance then round two will take the, the fastest 12 then finally in round three is when the poll will be decided so can you not burn your tires up in the first round the concern at this racetrack is that the track is so coarse so it's so abusive on tires that your first lap on the racetrack is probably going to be the fastest so if you go lay a good lap time down, you most likely cars aren't going to be able to go out the second time and knock you down. So I, I, I you don't want to guess wrong. You that's, what, that's my problem. I'm, I'm afraid if you went out and guessed wrong and you didn't go fast enough and had to go run again, then the tires wouldn't support yeah. you making a fast enough lap. So I just think you have to run as fast as you can. But I will say, Rick, now that the sun is down and the lights are on, I support waiting just to yes. see how fast the track is because I think that 3080, you know, it took, like I said, about a 3125 to be top 24 in practice. I think it's going to take a, basically a sub 31 to be top 24 here in qualifying. Once again, the access road comes into play as they will get onto the track using the access road. And you see the 48 making the move early to go on the track. Yeah, he's moving right out. And that surprises me just a little bit. I thought they would have waited, just like you said, Steve, but wait and see what other cars run, get an understanding of what the pace of the racetrack is. But Marty. Well, guys, when they gave the three-minute warning, Chad Canal told Jimmy Johnson on the radio, we're going to roll, and we're going to roll quick. And then he said to spotter Earl Barber, and he said, be smart, get him a clean hole. And he told Jimmy Johnson, it's clean if you want it now. Jimmy made this choice to go early here, but they did want to go early on no matter what here on the 48. So we'll see what we've got for championship contenders right off the bat. Jimmy Johnson on the track as soon as it goes green. So this strategy... If they move into the top 24, I love this strategy because they're going to sit on pit road longer than everyone else. 
their tires are going to be cooler than everyone else's in round two. So as long as the track will hold the speed right now, I like this strategy. Again, really the goal, get into round three. So what we're seeing here, though, out of Jimmy Johnson is not a very good lap compared to Biffle. No, it's not. And Greg Biffle was not very good in practice. So he's third right now compared to Biffle. The concern I have is Greg Biffle is 24th in practice. So perhaps Greg Biffle made great strides with his race car. We hope that's the case for Greg Biffle. And his well, they heard it. Pretty yeah. bad. He said pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. But so aren't they. We're actually not going to have to wait long because the 19 of Carl Evans is going to show us what he has. And he was right there ninth in practice. Kelly. And Carl saying, hey, you want to do the same thing we did in practice? And the team answering him, yeah, do you think that's going to work? But either way, they also wanted to get out there early and make this first run. I mean, well, you see right here coming up to speed right around the top of the racetrack. You know, Jeff, the other thing to keep in mind is we've had those two Xfinity Series practices. But the reason I didn't think that would be a big deal is because the trucks have been on practice this morning. So it's not like the cup cars were the first thing on the track. And we saw Jimmy Johnson ran that 93 uh, Michael McDowell ran a 97. Just for reference, Michael McDowell was 35th in practice. Well, and this confirms it, that those laps aren't very good because Carl Edwards is tracking much faster than Greg Biffle, tenths of a second faster than Greg Biffle. So if that is truly the case, if he can keep this speed back around, which he's losing, well, as I said, that he starts gaining, he's going to easily run, what, a, something sub-70, yeah, 59. That puts Jimmy Johnson basically three and a half tenths off the pace. And three and a half tenths probably will not stay inside the top 24. I mean, it's a good chance that Jimmy Johnson would drop out of the top 24 and have to make a second run. Well, it's definitely uncomfortable. In practice, it was about a half a second. That's right. From, from first to 24. Things seem to get a little bit tighter, though, when the track cools down and the track gains gear up. Typically, times get a little bit tighter. I would agree with that. It's just, you know, less, I guess, less opportunity to slide around, less right. dependent on your race car to make the grip. We're getting ready to see Jimmy Johnson's teammate right there was rolling off pit road. The pole sitter from last week is Trevor Bain. The Roush Fenway car, the sixth Advocare, he's coming to take the green. Great announcement a few weeks ago. Advocare is going to be back on this car, supporting Trevor Bain, Roush Fenway Racing. He was 25th in practice. So him and his teammate Greg Biffle were kind of the bubble line, what we would consider the cut line. So we'll see what kind of lap the six can run. Look at all the sparks, though. How much is he hitting the racetrack, and how much is that taking speed away from him? Well, I really think it's the side skirt. They've been running these metal side skirts around the uh, exhaust pipe. I think they're titanium. That's where they're that bright white spark. It's awesome to watch. I'll give him credit <laughs> for that. And he looks like he's trending basically right on top of Greg Biffle's time. Still Ryan Newman on the right-hand side of the screen. He is all the way on the bottom of the racetrack. Left side tires touching the line, and he has a really good lap going. He was the fastest in practice, and right now at a 47, that's a very fast time. And he utilized, the, as you mentioned, the bottom of the racetrack. That's really the first one we've seen hug that white line in this qualifying session. And with all of that being said, I don't feel good about the 48. We see Alex Bowman up in the top five. It, when you're 10 out of 14, simple numbers will say 40 cars are going to run. you got to be 24th. This 48 right here, you see him cooling it down. But can they, can they make enough adjustments to make the car better? But will the tires hold it? We well, know the tires are going to be sold the second time out, or we have a strong belief they are. Can they find the speed? Here's the problem I have is Kyle Larson barely beats Jimmy Johnson in the 11th position. That's a surprise. He was third fast in the 10th right. position. But here's the thing. Even if the tires have enough speed to get into the top 24, the chance, chance of getting into the top 12, in my opinion, are gone. Because, yeah, and we talked about 10 guaranteed pit stall openings. I mean, this, these are the types of things that that could change the course of this championship battle. When you come Sunday afternoon, if Jimmy Johnson gets blocked in the pits, we can all say bad luck, or we could say bad qualifying. Right. Yeah, it's so important for pit selection, especially for the four running for a championship. Like, I'm a true believer. Jeff Gordon used to say this all the time, and I would half eye roll and half believe him because we saw so many examples, but you make your own luck. He always used to say, listen, Stevie, that's not true. We make our own luck. And, Jeff, you've seen it in racing so many times where 
you can believe it's bad luck or you can truly look at what opportunity you have to prevent it. Well, you can take control or you can be a victim. That, you know, there's two different ways to look at it. You can just take control and say, you know what, everything is my fault. We affect everything. Or you can say, hey, we have, we have no control over all these things. And the problem with the no control is you can't fix that. That's right. There's nothing you can do about it. So uh, we saw Kevin Harvick go up to third fastest. He ran against the wall. We saw Ryan Newman on the pole on the white line. So two completely different looks at it. Uh, Blaney just went out. He's fifth fastest. Austin Dillon, fourth fastest. Yeah, it seems like everybody continues to keep going out and going faster than what Jimmy Johnson ran as we see Tony Stewart and that 14 making his final qualifying run. See if he can stay in the throttle. He was able to get to the throttle really quickly. Pretty good lap going. So easy to overdrive this end of the racetrack, though. He's going to run. Well, he runs up top. I thought he was going to run. Well, I guess, what do you call this, the middle? Couldn't stay in the throttle. Never full throttle till right here, so that hurt his exit. Got in the corner pretty deep. I think maybe a little too deep, but went through one and two really well. Still eighth quickest for Tony Stewart. That yeah, should easily be good enough in my mind. Kurt he Busch easily as well be good enough second. Kurt Busch second. That drops Johnson down to 16th. And still only 22 have gone. Denny Hamlin. On his birthday, we'll see where he's in, going to end up qualifying. Well, you see Al Marola jump in front of Johnson. Those are going to be the cars, the cars that were, you know, not great in practice, kind of average in practice. The improvements they make are really going to determine, in my mind, if Jimmy Johnson make, moves through or not. Eric Al Marola beats him. You see Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. You would have to assume that they have showed the speed. Chase Elliott has showed the speed. But what about Clint Boyer, Casey Kane, Regan Smith? Can they put a lap up? They've yet to run to move. Jimmy Johnson down. Ty Dillon not able to go faster on his lap. As the 22 now coming to the green flag. And Logano now on the clock. Logano running a little bit lower line through one and two. You mentioned it, Jeff. He jumped in the gas to run a crazy lap time. Couldn't stay in it, but still carried the lap time. I mean, still in the green. Let's just in this end, see if he can go to the throttle and say he went to the very top on this end. A little bit more patient back to the gas. I think he might have realized he didn't have the best one at two because he knows he only has to be in the top 24. This lap should be good. That'd be good there. Second. Yeah, really good. Second for Logano. So now well, Logano and Edwards, both in the top five. How will Kyle Busch do? Marty. It's going to be an interesting study here. Rick Kyle Busch and his race team spent most of the day in race trim. They only made one run in qualifying at the very end of qualifying. But right now, you see on the right-hand side of the screen, looking okay, only a tenth back from right now, Ryan Newman. They did tell him that Ryan Newman ran completely on the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Busch right now towards the top, though. Brad Kozlowski now the new mark everyone's shooting for. And Kyle Busch goes 15th quickest way ahead of Jimmy Johnson that pushes him all the way to 22nd yeah we still have Casey Kane Elliott we have uh, Chase Elliott left to go still some really good cars we will expect to see the 48 back out on the track in this round with 10 minutes to go he has plenty of time to cool the car down but at the same time it will be the second time around on these tires Brad Kislowski the fastest in this First round coming back to pit road. When you see now we're comparing to Paul Menard in the 24th and Casey Mears is in the green. Jimmy Johnson has a less than a tenth of a second over Paul Menard. So if Casey Mears can beat Paul Menard by that tenth of a second, he'll go above Jimmy Johnson. And right now, looks like he'll do it off turn four. Here's Casey Kane. He's kind of right in the red. Mears two tenths of a second faster as it moves McDowell down. Kane had a really good three and four. Entered, entered turn three, not in great shape, but came off and only went to 23rd, moved Jimmy Johnson to the bu bubble line on 20 at 24. Clint Boyer not able to go fast enough to get into the top 24 on his first run. So now only six cars still to go with Jimmy Johnson right on the line. Chase Elliott, one of those. Is there a dilemma here? Apart as far as teammates. I think we're getting ready to see what kind of speed Chase Elliott has. I mean, in practice, he was 10th quick. 
He has to go out and make a run. It might not come down to Chase Elliott, though, as we see Regan Smith tracking in the green. Now goes into the red. De Benedetto in the red as well as he comes out of four for his lap. De Benedetto's 27th. Regan Smith, he's a tenth of a second off what Jimmy Johnson has run. Regan Smith goes 30th on his lap. Brian Scott in his final qualifying session in the green. A lot closer to that white line. And Brian Scott could be the one to bump Jimmy out. Yeah, he lost a little bit of speed, but he still has some to go. He's going to go all the way to the bottom of three and four, but he drove in really deep all the way to the white line. Has maybe, to catch it. Maybe too deep, but is it enough speed? I think it's going to carry. He's losing time, though. Oh, he got so free getting in the turn. That did do it. He does it. He bumps Jimmy Johnson out of the top 24 by about a thousandth of a second, it looked like. But that shows you how far off Jimmy Johnson and his team were for for Brian Scott to get that loose on corner entry right. and had to chase the car up that much and still beat him. That shows you how far off, off the 48 car was. And Chase Elliott, look at the speed he has. And I wonder if they're questioning the time at which they went out. I think Chase Elliott's going to go to the top of the board with this lap. This is really fast. Oh, my goodness. I mean, smoked him a 20 wow. 1. 30-21 for Chase Elliott. We, we weren't expecting to see that kind of speed. Well, so you have to start asking yourself, did the 48 go too early? Did the track gain grip as the sun went down? I know that they wanted to get out there, get their lap, and cool their tires. I mentioned maybe saving tires. You mentioned trying to get them cooled, Jeff. But he, both of those theories, now you see him tightening his belt. Jimmy Johnson knows he's going to have to do it again. The path to the seventh championship is just a little more difficult. And see, they've got to go out here in a moment, and you see Jimmy tightening the belts, as you mentioned. Chad Canals watches on. This is a team that spent the entire day in practice just working on qualifying trim, trying to get ready for this. And you guys touched on it a moment ago, the laps on the tires. That's going to become key. You heard Chad Canals at the end of that first run for Jimmy Johnson. Take it easy on your tires. Take it easy on your tires. So now that's going to come into be a, being a factor here. Can they pick up time? But are the tires too worn to pick up time? That's going to be the big question when they go back out in a moment ago. Well, I believe as far off as that lap time is, they can pick up time. I think they'll make the top 24, but the, but but they're behind for the rest of the day, even if they do. What what line do they run, though? Does he run right up against the wall where he has more banking and maybe not as hard on the tires? Well, we haven't heard. When he said it was far off, I don't think we've heard what his balance issue is, Jeff. I think Jimmy probably knows where on the racetrack to put his car to adjust to that balance. But think about this. What Marty mentioned, I think, needs to be talked about. Only qualifying runs. Fifth in practice. We didn't see anything in practice that would tell us that this 48 was going to struggle in qualifying. So this, we talk about momentum. Well, you can also take momentum away from yourself. And right now, the struggle in this first round of qualifying has got to be a, a, a negative blow for this 48, Jeff. I, I think it is. And I think now the, you know, it is diverted their attention, right? Rather than going and competing for a pole, which is what they came in this thing thinking about. They're just trying to get in the top 24 to get into the second round. And I just think that they are shocked. But Paul Menard, he was able to go faster, which gives Jimmy Johnson hope. And the concern about that is if Paul Menard went faster, can Casey Kane go faster? Can Brian Scott go faster? Can other cars go faster as well? So but the, that showed right there. Ty Dillon, he's, he's showing a little bit of speed as well. I'm telling you, this track is picking up. It's getting darker. It's getting cooler. You've been down here testing before. In, in, in the, the, when the sun goes down here, this place gains grip. It's not a huge amount, but we're only talking a few hundreds, maybe a tenth of a second. Saw Dylan, Ty Dillon, he drove into turn three really hard. Uh, got into turn three, it looked like the speed was okay, but drove in there hard enough where he just couldn't maintain the speed on the exit of turn four. But even that lap was an improvement. Even that lap for Ty Dillon, while it wasn't enough, it was faster than his first round. Maybe add a little tape. Well, I think what they do is they open right here. There are fans that you can flip on from the driver's compartment to pull air in and cool the tires. So to do that, though, they have to have an opening. So there's those openings in the duck or in the nose. You have to untape them around the fan. Now you tape them back up to go on the racetrack. Jimmy Johnson has gone all season making it into round two. This would be the first time, if it happens, that he doesn't get into the second round. So Michael, Michael McDowell is in 28th, Jimmy Johnson in 27th, and McDowell going into turn three was about two tenths to the good. I think he's still going to hold on. It's going to be close. 
Yes, he moves himself up to 23rd. So we've seen several cars now have enough speed to move themselves forward. Time clicking away on the first round and the other three championship four contenders comfortably in the top 24. Kyle Busch is 16th. He's going to stay in the top 24. Edwards and Logano up there sixth and fourth respectively. Well, Jeff, I think you brought the, the perfect point up is now the 48. The reason they're waiting is because now their whole focus has to be advancing. So now they think the track's getting better waiting to the end. So to so your point, the focus has completely shifted on where they were just 21 minutes ago. Yeah, they went out early hoping to have cool tires going into round two. Now they're going to have to go out late in round one, which means they're going to have hot tires going into round two. So that slow lap changed their entire, their, their entire strategy completely went upside down. Kyle Larson, this is another car I think we're all a little surprised to see outside the top 24. He's going to make one lap. So you heard Chad Knauss let him know a minute and a half to go. That's when we'll go. And I think you have to be careful. I understand waiting, but you don't want to wait so long that if something happened, somebody had some sort of problem in front of them or something they got blocked in, that they couldn't find time to go. Here's Kyle Larson. Two tenths of a second to the good, oh. and they're going to sit. So, Jimmy, everybody that's gone out again has picked up. Uh, looks like you're need to run probably about a 70, which is about a tenth and a half faster than where we're at right now. Maybe two. Pretty calm, though, right? Yeah, Very I like the calm demeanor. voice. Just look, matter of fact. At your leisure, Earl. There you have it. At your leisure, Earl. Earl the spotter for the 48. You may roll. Uh, yeah, the problem is they told him to roll, but there were some cars around him that were wanting to roll at the same time, and they just went by Jimmy Johnson. So now he has to just sit there and wait, wait for the clear line to go. That's the problem of waiting too long, is things like that can happen. It can put you in a situation where you don't have a clean racetrack. Get out there, stage spot off the floor. Yeah, I mean, to your point, Earl's doing his best, but there, you know, there are cars behind him on pit road. And you heard, you heard Earl say, the guys coming off four and Jimmy started rolling. The reason Jimmy started rolling was to tell the people behind him, hey, I'm going. You're not going to take this spot. That's just a signal saying, I, you, this is my turn to go. I'm not going to let you go past me. Big right here for Jimmy Johnson. Can he break back into the top 24 and make it to round two? Running the high line, coming to the green flag. That's to carry as much speed as he can to the green flag. We see that at every racetrack where there's multiple grooves. Key now is not to overdrive the entry so you can go back to the throttle the way you need to. In the red early. There he goes. There's the caution. That's what we talked about, waiting to go out. And this is huge. Now he can come in. This clock will stop. He can come in and cool his, cool his engine, try to get it cooled down. But when it goes back green, he's going to have to be ready to roll. That's the problem with waiting late. You want to wait as long as you can, but when these things happen, it puts you in a bind. Yeah, and NASCAR, like you said, they'll stop yeah, the clock, 40, 40, 40. but there's still time on the tires. And my concern was he was still in the red, tracking through one and two. Yeah, so yes. You hear Chad giving clear instructions. This is what we need to do. But he was in the red through one and two. So we see here Landon Castle at the top of three and four just spins out. We've seen this a couple times today. Big long slide for the 38. Luckily he, for him, he didn't hit anything. Tire goes flat right there at the end. But Jeff, you called it. 48 of Jimmy Johnson. This is going to be. I, I don't. I think he might have enough time to come around and get the green flag. But from what I saw in one and two, still in the red. Now one more half a lap on his tires. I think I'm going to be shocked if the 48 makes it to the top 24. Has never missed right. the second round this all season. year long. The biggest race of the year. So the problem is it that he has enough time to go out, but everybody else that wants to go out too. So you got all these race cars on the end of pit road trying to go out basically at the same time. Marty. And that's what Earl Barber just pointed out. You see those five cars at the end of pit road waiting. He said, I don't think we're going to be able to get it, guys. He has to leave here, in theory, at 38 seconds. They think they can get around in enough time to be able to take the green, but that's cutting it awfully close. And then you have those five cars as well out on pit road right now. And they're trying to cool the car down. So a lot of things need to happen right for the 48, even to be able to get a lap in. But, Steve, to your yeah, point, even to your point, Steve, 
will they have enough speed to make it through to the next round? That's the big question. I mean, I, that, my concern is I didn't think they had enough speed on the last run. And the clock starts. The clock starts when NASCAR says the track's open. Not when you right. come to the start-finish line. As soon as it, NASCAR right. says the track is open, that's when the clock starts. So there's already five cars at the end of pit road that Jimmy is going to have to try to muscle his way around. But you don't want to be in the middle of those cars, so this is going to be tight. And there is a safety vehicle just at the exit of turn two. So they're not going to open the track or put the green flag out on this session until the track is completely clear. Safety vehicles on the front stretch as well, just making sure there isn't anything left on the track after the spin by Castle. Jeff, we talk about the small things that affect a race, affect a weekend. We're right here. Jim Johnson was trying to go, didn't go. Guess who, who went by? Him? Yeah. 38 of Landon Castle, the car that brought out the caution. So that one decision to get on the racetrack or not get on the racetrack, I mean, that piles on. And that decision, what Jimmy was forced into making that decision because the 32 that was coming at such a, I'm sorry, the car behind him was coming at such a high rate of speed, Jimmy had no choice. You, when you go to the end of pit road, you don't have to wait in line. You can just go whenever you want to go. So he just had got put in a position where he just had to stop. So this is interesting to me. So the cars are three wide at the end of pit road. We always talk about a race within a race. So Earl Barbin, in his opinion, takes 43 seconds to run the access road, come around. So they have about a 13 second window. But we talk about the race within a race. What's the level of respect that these three on pit road are going to have for Jimmy Johnson? Do they care? Look at the official. Look the at the official. official. Says, nope, you, yeah. can't, you can't go over here. You can't, can't be leave. in the pit box. Right. So you got to follow out over there. He tells them where to go. But so now Brian Scott. Paul Menard, Ty Dillon. There's other cars at the end of pit road. What is their opinion going to be for the six-time champion? Do they care that he's racing for a championship, or they, do they have to go out and run the lap for themselves? So it's not long before NASCAR opens a racetrack. The, looks like to me the safety vehicles are heading back to their spot. So as soon as NASCAR says the track is open, that's when the clock will start. And that's when the chaos will start as well. Well, because now the question is, even if he takes a green flag, will he have clean air? Will he have clean racetrack? Will the car be fast enough, period? Right, and we saw him in the red. We never saw him get into the green on the last time he went out. And, and, and not only the cars right here, but what about the cars that work themselves onto the racetrack? And will they block him? So this answers your question right here. They're all going to go. No and offense to Jimmy Johnson. It's going to get a little crazy here. Jimmy Johnson jumps right in behind Brian Scott on the access road. You have to use the access road to get onto the track. If I was Jimmy, I'd be backing up right now. I'd be slowing down. I'd be getting away from Scott. I think that's what he's doing. He's realizing that he he's going to be okay. There he goes. He's, he backed off from Brian Scott. He doesn't want the cars behind him to catch him. But now he can accelerate carry a tremendous amount of speed. Now, this hurts his turn three speed, so he's going to have to be exceptionally aggressive going back to the throttle really early to make sure he has enough speed at the start-finish line. Well, there's no doubt he's going to get the green flag. 20 seconds to go, so they've done the right job here. Now, have they made the right adjustments? Is there enough speed left in the race car? Tracking in the red, down into turn one, into the green a little bit, two hundredths of a second. Going the wrong way up corner exit, high on exit. And remember, when he went out the first time, he went all the way through three and four as hard as he could, through one and two as hard as he could. That's laps on the tires. That's time on the tires. It's hurting him right now. Now he has to have a career three and four if he thinks his 48 can transfer through. Going the wrong way. Well, it is, but that's because he backed up the entry. He's going to get a great run on corner exit. I believe he's going to go through. And right now he's through. 22nd for Jimmy Johnson. There are cars on the racetrack, though. We'll see if we'll anyone see. can bump them. What a great job. What a great job to get to 20 seconds. Brian Scott was able to advance into the second round. Jamie McMurray advances into the second round. Playing the cards you're Man. dealt, Rick. That's how you become a six-time champion. Chad, you see the disappointment. He knows they're behind. He, he's not happy about this situation, but they at least have the opportunity to try to improve, maybe qualify somewhere in the teens. I don't think they'll have a great shot of going through. But then again, we're not sure they had a great shot here, and they found a way to do it. The cards have got to fall right if you want to advance not only out of round one, but to win a championship. What a season it has already been for Jimmy Johnson. Four wins, looking for his seventh championship, and he advances to round two of qualifying. After an eventful round one, here are the drivers that did not advance into round two. Chris Buescher, former chaser, is 27th. 
As we look back through the 41 cars, Craig Galding will not qualify for his third race of the year in the Cup Series. That's the way they will line up. Again, 25 through 40th for Sunday's race. Definitely the story in the first round was the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Went out early, thinking strategy was going to come into play where they could go out and post a number, but it didn't work. So then the stress really kicked in. Atlanta Castle was able to go by him before he was able to get on the track. And as soon as Landon Castle had come out of turn four, he spins. That stops the run for Jimmy Johnson. He comes back in to cool it off. But Chad Canal stayed calm and cool, it looked like. And then Jimmy Johnson got it done on the racetrack. And what a great job in a difficult situation. More laps on their tires pressure pack situation understanding what they had to deal with and then making it happen so you know really good job of dealing with adversity although it, you know it, this may hurt them and their opportunity to sit on the pole they took a bad situation and made the most of it Marty and you got to give them credit guys just for the fact that they stayed calm this entire time Chad Canals was very calm on the radio Jimmy very calm on the radio as well there's no panic in this 48 team as you guys mentioned that's why they're six-time champions but of the teams who transferred through nobody has more laps on their tires than this 48 car so that brings up Jeff's question now how do they make it to the next round that's gonna be a difficult challenge for these guys especially when you look at his fellow championship contenders all of them did it in one lap so they have much fresher tires and that's a huge key here at Homestead Miami all of them have much fresher tires in this next round than Jimmy Johnson but I think they feel fortunate right now just to have made it as far as they have they made it into round two the goal for all of the championship four is going to be to make it into round three because as Steve mentioned earlier the fact that there are only really ten great pit stalls available the ideal pit stalls you've got to make it into that third round if you want to be able to pick one of the best speaking of one of the best Jimmy Johnson again going for a championship but he's had to go through quite a bit just to even get into the second round that's coming up next you can get the latest NASCAR news results and highlights delivered right to your inbox never miss a story last lap pass by subscribing to the official nascar newsletter today visit nascar.com slash newsletter cars rolling as round two gets underway this one only 10 minutes long and we will determine who the top 12 will be I would just expect the 48 to go out very late in this session. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, you know, they're going to wait, try to allow their stuff to cool as much as they can, try to get the best lap. And I wonder, I, I think those cars going quicker their second time out confuses a little, confused everybody. I think that you, you, you would have wanted to wait as long as you could, but by cars going out that first round and going faster, it makes you question that a little bit. If you go ahead and go right now like Biffle, you still have time to come back in and make a second run. So uh, I think I, mean, I buy that, but third run quicker? I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I would have lost bet on the second run being quicker. Though. I, I didn't think Jimmy Johnson could do it, you know, because right. essentially he was right. on his third run. He'd gone through one and two. The only thing he hadn't done was go through three and four, and they still were able to move forward. So what we don't know, though, is how good cars gone quicker. No offense to Jimmy Johnson, but he self admittedly his first lap didn't feel good. Yep. I'm sure they made adjustments. You look at Chase Elliott, who put up just a crazy lap up at a 30 20 is there more speed left in that car I, I find that hard to believe well Biffle ran a little slower that run than he did the run the first run yeah then house junior he went 68. quicker he went quicker though by a whole tenth of a second so Bain a 30 76 I think Keselowski would be a great one to measure because he ran a 30 41 he was second fast and that 41 was full out in my mind not saving anything on his tires so currently trending a little quicker than Stenhouse he's on pace to run a high 40 or something if he's able to get through three and four well which he didn't get in the first part didn't get in the three very well but it's like he's carrying that speed off of four it's gonna be could be a 40 yeah it's gonna be right there 45 30 45 for Keselowski that was backing up the corner entry 
and working on corner exit running the top and it's best right there what Keselowski did because you said it Jeff gave up time on corner entry got in the gas really really well one time and you saw the speed come back on corner exit and it's so hard to do that as a race car driver because you believe the harder you drive the faster you're going to go but in many cases you drive too hard and it makes the car go slower once again Newman tried to stay down at the white line at least on entry and I wonder with older tires if that lower line yeah. is the way to go. I think on fresh tires, it really feel good. Maybe the shortest way around the racetrack. But as the tires get older, I wonder if a little bit higher isn't better. But Ryan Newman carrying a lot of speed off turn four. He's pretty quick in the first round. This will be a pretty good lap as well for Newman. He's third quickest. How about Blaney? Blaney's getting ready to run a great lap. He ran up the racetrack about three lanes up. A 39 for Blaney is a big improvement. He had only run a 67 for the 11th position in the first round. So that's a big pickup. A little bit cooler track as we see Kyle Busch, another one of the championship four on the track. He right on the bottom like we saw Ryan Newman. But here's the deficit, right? So he got through the middle of the corner good, but look at the time he's losing down the straightaway. So now he's going to run the top in three and four. Or the middle. Yeah, lo loses time getting in, but can he pick up the gas and have it go back the other way? Starts to gain a little time on exit. Yeah, that's going to be a good lap. We heard top better for both. Kyle Busch third quickest with a 46. So a 30-46. Kenseth, his teammate, 30-49. Now coming to the green flag. And we'll see how the second chaser is able to do in this qualifying run. We did a nice job in round one. Had a very competitive car, was fourth quick. Wow. That time's a race. Now he has to back it up. He come up the racetrack high on exit, didn't he, Jeff? It looked like that car turned way better than he anticipated it. The back of the car was around, the front was pointed, but I think it was a little freer than he wanted to be right in the middle of the corner. He doesn't get back to the gas on exit at all like he had hoped. This lab here is going to be questionable. It's going to be maybe seventh or so. Right at seven, 30 57. So seventh, seventh out of 13 is going to be really close to that top 12. As we see Blaney's first, Kevin Harvick's second. Harvick moved Logano down to eighth. And how about Chase Elliott? He's a tenth up at the moment right here. He ran that great lap in the first round. Can he back it up with another great lap? He's a tenth up going into turn three. What lane is he going to run? Bottom. Bottom, bottom, right against the white line. And still in the green and still gaining on Blaney. Oh, yeah, look at that lap. A 24. 24. He backs up what he did the first time around. So that puts Logano in ninth. And instantly Edwards, two tenths of a second off, looks really good because yeah. Chase Elliott is so far ahead of the field. So Edwards is the fastest of the three championship four that have already gone. Logano now getting close to being eliminated from the third round. Really, the question I have now is we saw Kyle Larson have to run twice. Jimmy Johnson have to run twice. The cars that are left to run have laps on their tires. So can they improve and run faster than Joey Logano? Just over four minutes remain. Casey Mears on the track. He's all the way down that white line. You see, as we're watching Casey Mears on the bottom right, you see A.J. Allmendinger in the green compared to Kurt Busch. And a long ways in the green, two-tenths of a second in climbing. This is a great lap. This 47 has really shown way more speed out of that race car here in the second half of the year. Now Logano, yeah, right on that cut line. Marty. Well, Rick, you mentioned it earlier. Here's the dilemma for the 48 cars. 3.42 now left on the clock here in this qualifying session. How long can they sit here? How long will they sit here? Because they've had to sit here because they were so late going out in round one with all the laps they have on their tires. They've tried to cool it as long as they can. Jimmy just now did hand, hand a scoring monitor over a moment ago to the team, so that means that they're pretty close to going out. But Earl Barber is calling out every 30 seconds as we watch Tony Stewart on the track right now saying three and a half left. And in a moment, he'll say three minutes left. So, Steve, that's the dilemma for Chad Canals. How long do you leave him here? And clearly, you're only going to get one shot here in the second round. Yeah, you're only going to get one shot. And as we were talking about that, Tony Stewart moves Joey Logano below the cut line you're only going to get one shot but think about this edwards kyle bush they think they have jimmy johnson down right now if he could somehow pull off a top 12 lap with these laps on his tires 
would really be remarkable. Kelly? And I can tell you what Joey Logano was dealing with that last, in that last run. He said he was loose off turn two. He had to lower the track bar to get into turn three and then loose again off turn four. So we'll see what adjustments they've made and if they help him um, as he goes back out. Yeah, it looked loose. You could see the back of the car. You know, the back of the car turned around. The front pointed very, very quickly. He wasn't able to be aggressive back on the throttle. So now with two and a half, and a half minutes left, he's going to roll down and into pit road and make sure he gets himself an opportunity to go back out again. He's and the 48 run. still has not rolled. I was going to say, Eric, he's going to run a second time before Jimmy Johnson runs his first in this round. We saw this last round. that caution came out and bit him. Now it would be, it would be, have to be a pretty snake bit for two cautions to come out, but it's possible. And again, we're getting the stack up at the end of pit road. Jimmy Johnson finally rolls. The 22 is going to roll. Hit access we're road. We've got to have 40 seconds roughly to get around the track roll. So think about that. Jack and Dallas is sitting there waiting, patiently waiting. Joey Logano going ahead and rolling. And remember, Joey's already gone in this session, so his tires have way more heat than Jimmy Johnson does. Even though Jimmy Johnson has more laps on his tires, Joey Logano has much more heat in his. Jimmy Johnson has rolled to the end of pit road, and now he will roll out onto the access road. I, Joey Logano is on the track. I'm sorry. I, 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 I think this would be huge, too. The 22 can lay a better lap time down with these hotter tires. That also would make a statement the way you mentioned if the 48 could improve his lap time. So Logano's on the clock, and Jimmy Johnson coming up to speed as we have just over a minute to go in round two. Logano went back to the throttle quickly, but I think he had to come back out of it. You saw him lose a little speed on the exit, too, but he's close. He is close, and Jimmy Johnson has this opportunity. If Joey Logano can improve, as he's done right here, and then Jimmy Johnson can somehow eliminate him again. Although I don't think Joey Logano's going to make it. His car just doesn't look to have to look like it has the grip to do what he needs to do. But how about Jimmy Johnson? Runs the bottom of the racetrack. He's in the green off turn two. Can he carry the speed? He's going to lose it down the straightaway, as we've seen cars that have run the bottom again. Will he run the top of three and four? He goes down to the bottom in three and four. And I think this is the concern. It's going to go into the green, but I don't think he can keep the speed down the straightaway off the bottom. He's going to lose a little bit here. And loses too much. 14. Too much, but I'm telling you, after round one, that right there has to be a success for this 48. To be right behind Joey Logano. If you would have asked Chad Canals sitting 15 minutes ago, hey, we'll give you 14th or 15th, I'm sure he would have just quit. That's exactly right. They did not transfer into round three, but if they stay 14th, I consider that a win. With everything they dealt with in that qualifying session, if 14th is the worst that they are, I think that's plenty good. There's still two cars on the track, one slowing now, and it looks as though Kurt Busch is going to stay in the gas. And so Kurt Busch will try on this last lap. Not sure, I haven't heard back from NASCAR yet if this one will count, but he was right at the start-finish line, and no, we're hearing that this lap will not count. So Kurt Busch tried to time it out perfectly. He did not. He got to the line a little bit too late. And so that means that Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson will start in the same row. Very interesting for those two championship four. They didn't make it into round three. Edwards and Kyle Busch did. That's coming up next. Drivers not advancing into round three. Right at the top of the list, two of the championship four will start in row seven for Sunday's race. Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson. Interesting how they both had different reactions to what took place. A little concern here on the 22 team of Joey Logano. It looks like they might be a little dejected from that performance. Yeah, Joey Logano and his team, they qualified 13th. Obviously, they get together. Uh, but right next to him, Jimmy Johnson, they were 14th. But... These guys, they're like, you know, it's okay. That was a bad situation. We came out okay. It could have been a lot worse. Mark. Mark. Let's chat with them now and find out, does, does 14th kind of feel okay after how crazy that session was, Jimmy? Yeah, that, that was that was wild. Um, to have the caution come out certainly didn't help us. And to have the tires be that old and, and post a respectable lap there um, is, is good for the, the low Chevrolet. Unfortunately, just was off on that first run and, and got behind. Um, but man, I'm so much better at racing. Let's line them up and race. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly happened on the first run? I think we all were surprised 
from that and what happened, but it was a bit, was it going too early? What happened? I don't know. It felt like an okay lap. Um, it was just slow. When I looked at Dartfish, um, my, my corner exit wasn't where it needed to be. It was definitely off there. So um, I was too free that, that first run. Uh, we worked on it. Um, I felt like the, the lap when the caution came out, I, I would have been able to, to transfer and, and keep a lap off my tires, right. but that caution got me. So, uh, yeah, what's a championship race without a little drama? There you go. Jimmy Johnson able to smile about it. As he said, I'd like to line him up and race right now if we could, Kelly. Well, obviously, probably a little bit of disappointment here in the 22 camp as Joey was fastest among the chasers, at least in practice this morning. Joey, what were you dealing with in the car that kept you from advancing to the final round? <laughs> it's a little bit of both. Uh, it was a little free, and then it was a little tight other times, and, um, you know, it's just hard to get back out there uh, real quick, and your tires are still warm to go faster, but, um, yeah, it is what it is. We're, we'll start 13th, and uh, we'll move forward from there. It's not, uh, it's not that bad. We're going to be okay, and... Um, you know, we'll, we'll race hard and, and practice uh, our car tomorrow and try to get our car driving good and, um, and being able to move around different lanes and stuff like that. All right, as you said, 13, so we'll have chasers starting side by side for Sunday's race. At this point, Joe Gibbs Racing has to feel pretty good. All four of their cars advance into the third round and more importantly, the two championship four of Edwards and Kyle Busch. You know, moments ago, interesting here, Carl Edwards sitting in his car getting ready to go, and Jimmy Johnson comes up to chat with him. Jimmy doesn't advance into the third round. Carl does. A little conversation going on there between the two of the championship four. Still cordial. Give it time. Give it time. We'll see how cordial <laughs> they are on Sunday afternoon. Green flag is out on the final round. Only five minutes. This to determine the top 12 starting positions as well as the poll. Uh, look at the two that were fastest from that second round. Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott. Blaney on his way toward the front. And it looks like Denny Hamlin's going to go. And Denny Hamlin turning 36 today. The Chesterfield, Virginia native was in the chase. Not able to advance out of the round of eight. That really puts it in perspective. Denny Hamlin turned 36 today, and I mentioned Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott. They're 22 and 20, respectively. So, you know, you don't think of Denny Hamlin as, as the uh, senior driver in the garage area, but at 36, he's getting that way. Definitely not the elder statesman. And Hamlin will set the mark. He's the first one on the track coming out of turn number four. And will take the green. And this will be the pace that everyone will be basing their laps off of. He goes a little bit lower through the middle of the turn. One and two. Yeah, a little lower. I, I agree with you, Jeff. I think as tires age, they're going to move up the racetrack a little bit. But for some reason, they're running, it seems to be a little bit higher in three and four than they are one and two. Danny Hamlin, no exception, as he goes to the top of the racetrack. So Hamlin right up against the fence as he comes out of four, and he will let us know what the mark is to beat. 47, a 30-47 for Denny Hamlin. That's a good lap. Well, that's his fastest lap of qualifying yet today. For Ryan Newman, though. Newman's going to post a faster time, it looks like, as he gets right up to the line. And he goes quicker at a 30-44. I think all those years of drivers saying you couldn't go fast on old tires, Jeff, y'all were lying to us because <laughs> even in a track like Miami where tires fall off, it seems like there just seems to be speed. But seriously, is it? we didn't see this in practice, so is it? Is it the evening? Is it's the track tracted. picking it's up speed? Tracted. It's got to be, right? I mean, it's just got to be tracked. A little bit cooler now as the sun has been down for almost an hour. A little bit over that. Ryan Blaney. He came, the green. he came to the line. Really good. He was about a 10. Wow, that thing is loose. He's going to lose a lot of speed down the back straightaway. He had a great run into turn one. See if he can gain any of that back. Stays up high and going the wrong direction. We'll see if he can back the turn up. He had his hands full. Blaney is third quickest of the three. 
Kevin Harvick tracking in the green. First time he's ever been eliminated from this format. Last week at Phoenix, he doesn't want to be forgotten. He'd like to come up, be the spoiler, win this race. And Harvick. Edwards on the right-hand side of the screen. Harvick's in the green at a 30-39. So now Kevin Harvick is fastest. Yeah, Edwards is way off on speed. He, on the, uh, coming through turn two, it looked like he had to get out of the throttle. was way high. He is way off. This, this could be interesting because if Carl Edwards, who is the slowest, he could end up right with Logano and Johnson. Isn't that just how it works? It sure does. Here comes Kyle Busch. Let's see what he does. Well, Kyle Busch's lap isn't very good either, although he's going to make a little time back here on exit if he can stay in the gas. He was able to lift early. And Kyle Busch. Wow, this is going to be great. He is sixth. Carl Edwards is seventh. And those two potentially could drop all the way down and all four of the championship contenders could run nose to tail. A bigger story, did Carl Edwards have the water temperature to run two laps? You don't normally see these cars run two laps. Remember, you can't let the emotion of the situation make a bad decision. So, I mean, two laps on this engine right here with the grill tape solid, how hot did he get that engine? That could be something that we might be looking back on either tomorrow during practice or even Sunday during the race. He missed three. He missed one and two so big. He was actually able to run quicker his second lap. Almendinger, so far, is the only one slower than Edwards. Keselowski looks like he has a chance. He's at the top of three and four, tracking in the green. How will he be able to carry the speed on exit? Lost a little bit through the middle of the turn, and he's second quickest. So now Tony Stewart, he's 11th. So all the chase guys, 9th, 10th, 13th, and 15th. <laughs> they are two rows apart. So now Jimmy Johnson and that recovery that they had looks even better, right? Looks Absolutely. Even, so this right here, we saw Carl Edwards had big trouble in turns two. So everything was going good. Looks like he got right there. He had to get out of the out of get of the throttle. Almost into the wall. And that is Homestead. Home, you feel like the car is turning, and when it ever, when it, as soon as it quit turning, it seems like it gets this huge push off of turn two. You just can't get the thing pointed. Kevin Harvick sits on the pole, wants to prove that he doesn't want to be forgotten. But think about this now. 9th, 10th, 13th, and 14th. We mentioned the pit stalls. They're not quite as clear when you get that back that far. So now what crew chief? What crew chief has studied up? What crew chief will make the right decision? Remember, pit pick is done by qualifying order. All four of the chase guys will have to be a little bit later in the pit pick who will get a great stall or get fortunate enough to see who picks around you. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, they're going to start in row five. Joey Logano, Jimmy Johnson, they'll start in row seven. <laughs> Marty. Kevin Harvick with a smile on his face. You said you wanted to win this weekend. That's a good way to start the weekend, isn't it? Well, I'm just, I'm really proud of everybody and our Jimmy John's Bush team uh, for everything that they've done all year, really the last three years, everybody at Stuart Haas Racing. But I'm really proud of the character and, and the effort that we put together really throughout the whole year and last weekend. And this just goes to show you exactly where the focus of the team is and, and what they do. They, they don't, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. They want to come to the racetrack and perform well and, and uh, bring good race cars. So just really proud of that. And, and uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't know if we, if we had a chance for the pole with as fast as the, the 24 had been running, but I knew every round that if we could just run the same speed, that that's usually half the battle uh, because you never know how much it's going to slow down for everybody else, and it doesn't take much to make a mistake. So just really proud of everybody um, on, our, on our Jimmy John's team. Just got to thank everybody at uh, Hendrick Engines Chassis and everybody at Stuart Haas Racing um, and Tony Stewart for one last race. So um, it'd be weird to not see him on the racetrack next year. Of course, their last race was Chevrolet as well, but they have worked so hard in the second half of the season, Rick, to turn the qualifying program around on the four team. They show it with a pole here today at Homestead, Miami. It's the fourth straight pole in 2016, won by a non-chaser. It's hard to say Kevin Harvick, a non-chaser. We're going to hear from Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards next. Now, four drivers, all with an opportunity to win the title later today. A thousand faces staring at me. Thousand times I've fallen. Thousand voices dead at my feet. Now I'm gone. Now I'm gone.
It all happens Sunday on NBC. The championship for the Sprint Cup Series, it will be decided between the championship four. Kyle Busch going to try to go back to back. Joey Logano, Carl Edwards looking for their first ever Sprint Cup Series championship. And Jimmy Johnson trying to join the greats of the sport. Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty as he sh makes the run for his seventh championship. Kelly. And I think, Rick, that I heard Carl Edwards say he just got a little bit too tight on that last run. But uh, interesting, you and your teammate Kyle lining up ninth and 10th. And then we've got the other pairing of Jimmy Johnson and Joey Logano, 13th and 14th. What do you anticipate at the start of this race? Well, yeah, those guys know their place back there. That's important. <laughs> arms. Uh, um, we, I, we, I screwed that up a little bit. I, I, I mean, that car is really fast. And um, yeah, it's so line sensitive out there. And, I was probably a little too aggressive, and I think I got it on the splitter a little bit, but um, I don't know. It just, it, it's a starting spot. It's, in a way, it's, I guess it's good we're all back there, but they won't be back there for long. All of us won't. We've got some pretty good race cars. We had a, saw a little bit of an interesting moment when Jimmy Johnson approached you after he was eliminated. What was that conversation like? He pointed out, he was, he was noticed when he was watching TV, that he, we have in common with you, we have zippers, just like you today. So we're just discussing that, that um, you have a zipper, we have a zipper. I mean, how cool is that right here on, on uh, network television? So that was it. I don't know. Somehow I just don't believe that that was the conversation <laughs> taking place between Jimmy and Carl. Thank you, Carl, for your time. Yeah. No, he was actually talking a bunch of trash, and all the media would have loved to hear it, but we keep it between ourselves. It's, it's pretty hardcore trash talking, but um, I'll get him on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, all right. These pleasantries will be coming to an end Sunday. Marty. Kelly, we're going to talk to Kyle Busch in just moments, but you see he and, he and Adam Stevens are actually studying. They're looking at our monitor to see where everybody qualified, and now they're trying to guess where they should take on pit road. So they're trying to kind of fill out everyone, one through nine, where they'll, they think they'll pick on pit road and what stall might be left when they get to stall 10 when Kyle Busch will get the pick, and Carl Edwards is going to come in and say a word or, or two as well. So they're trying to figure out where they can pick on pit road. So, Steve, that's a critical part of it, isn't it, just to know where you want to pick on pit road road and looking and kind of planning of what you think will be available when you get that shot to pick well that's the key you know the key is Kyle Busch qualified ninth so it's easy to understand that Kevin Harvick will take pit stall one but then where will Keselowski Newman Hamlin Elliott Truex Jr. Kenseth Blaney where are they going to go you try to somewhat plan out where they're going to end up maybe Kyle likes to be early on pit road maybe later some drivers Jeff have a preference on what box, whether they like an opening in or an opening out, which they feel more comfortable. Uh, Kyle Busch in ninth may not have an option. In my opinion, he's going to have basically either pit stall 33 or pit stall 21, which are going to be openings in. He'll probably definitely take those, but you can't over prepare. No such thing as over preparation. So, so Adam Stevens, Kyle Busch trying to discuss all the options. And then, of course, Carl wants to know because he picks right after Kyle. Marty. All right, we'll jump in and talk to Kyle now. So that was a thorough discussion about which pit stall to select, but what did you learn about your race car in qualifying? Uh, really free. Um, we freed up the most of our teammates, which makes sense, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we needed to do that. So ultimately, we uh, we didn't qualify where we would have liked to. That's, uh, that's not as good as I was expecting or hoping for, but... Um, all things considered, you got to look at the bigger picture, I guess. And uh, we're all 9th to 14th, so uh, there's pretty much a blanket right there. You're the only chase for that spent time in race trim today. Will that play into your favor at all? Because you have basically an hour of practice they didn't get in race trim. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you, you hope that it plays in your favor. It was during the heat of the day. It was during when, when we're going to race, um, you know, on Sunday. So... Uh, the biggest thing that we learned there was what we want to work on over the nighttime in order to get our car better. So we are a little bit of a step ahead as far as working on our stuff, but we're also a set of tires behind. So, um, you know, we're, we're not going to go out right away probably tomorrow, and we're going to go out on our scuffs, which uh, we're not going to bust off a fast lap time, so we're going to struggle for lap time for tomorrow's practice probably. Uh, and just try to get a balance again and get a relative feel for what we've got going on, and then we'll try to go for happy hour and make sure that uh, we do have the speed or we can get the speed out of the race car when it matters when we put stickers on. Some good points by Kyle Busch qualifies ninth and isn't it funny guys that's how it always works out the team that spent the least amount of time focusing on qualifying and practice today is the team that qualified the best and in qualifying this evening Kyle Busch will start ninth Sunday afternoon. Teammates in row five. Row. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, and Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson will be in row seven for Sunday's race. Lap. Carl's leading. 
You're in second. <laughs> What's the etiquette, Kyle? <laughs> I kind of sealed that uh, earlier in the year when I bumped him out of the way. <laughs> so, well, I know the answer that's to that. That's why I thought I'd return the favor here, Kyle. Uh, so, let's, just, let's just put it this way. I hope I'm close enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was earlier this week on the Dan Patrick Show. All right, handicap this race for us, guys. Well, right now, I'm not sure if anyone showed anything in qualifying. They're ninth to 14th. I think they missed some opportunities to pin someone like Jimmy Johnson behind, but they kind of fumbled there in the last round, Jeff. Yeah, they didn't take advantage of Jimmy's problems, but, you know, they're all going to be right there together. They're all going to be see, see each other when the green flag drops, and you're going to know what you need to do this entire race. And again, they will have two practices tomorrow for race trim. Coming up next on NBCSN, it's Meekum Auto Auctions from Anaheim.